Hello everyone, welcome to my 10-day adventure on the Erie Canal Trail. On this solo self-supported tour, I'm riding across the state of New York on my folding bike, the Brompton Sea Line Explorer. I'm starting in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada and ending in Albany, New York, United States. Every adventure has a beginning, so I'll see you in Niagara Falls, Ontario as I cross the Rainbow Bridge to the United States. Good morning everyone and welcome to Wheels on the Bike. I'm Agnieszka and I'm at the start of another bicycle touring adventure. Where am I? I'm at a border crossing to the United States. I'm going to be taking the Erie Canal Trail to Albany, New York. But all adventures begin with some sort of a start and my start has been, well, getting dropped off by my parents and now waiting at the border. Bicycles are not allowed on the pedestrian bridge. No worries, we wait. And the views are great. It took me about 30 minutes to cross the border and the crossing itself was very smooth. Once in the US, my first task was to ride southeast to the town of Tonawanda to join the trail. The trail from Tonawanda to Lockport is paved. I rode on multi-use trails and joined some on-road segments. The trail was very well marked. On this tour, I brought the Brompton. Now, this is a Brompton Sea Line, and that means that it has six gears. Three of them are internal and two are external. Basically, this is not a touring bike, but as with anything, people tour on Bromptons, and so am I. Today's ride was a great introduction to bridges. I would ride under and across multiple bridges on this trip. And after crossing one of them in Pendleton, Right off the trail, I found a little gem, Uncle G's ice cream. I was so excited, but take a look at this. Ah, they're closed. I'm too early. I decided to wait for the ice cream place to open. Uncle G's, I mean, take a look at the flavor menu. Ah. Fueled by ice cream, I continued along the Erie Canal, passing the Pendleton guard lock on my way to Lockport. In Lockport, I headed to the Lockport Locks District and stopped by the flight of five historic locks and watched boats pass through locks 34 and 35. Watching boats pass through locks never gets old. As this was the Saturday of a long weekend, I pre-booked accommodation and stayed at the Quality Inn in Lockport. I would not recommend this place. Overpriced, dirty and generally rundown. I started the day by passing Lockport's historic locks and enjoying the stunning downhill. That's the benefit of riding west to east. Today's ride hugged the shore of the canal, passing underneath multiple bridges. Remember day one? Yeah, bridges are back. I rode next to farmlands and apple orchards. I may have also stopped to pick up an apple or two. I started getting used to seeing fishermen on the banks of the canal. Every so often I'd pass a cyclist, but there were few and far between in this section of the trail. I did cross paths with multiple boats traveling west. Unfortunately, the town or village of Middleport didn't have all too much to offer in terms of food. The one cafe was shut down completely, the other one is closed on Sundays. This is a no-go as well, and that's because they're closed on Sundays. So I stopped at a pavilion in Middleport. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, the one great thing about it is there is a water spout here. Let's see, I don't know if this water is potable, if it's drinking water or not, but let's see. Oh yeah, there's water here, perfect. I will need to soak my arm sleeves because it is so, so, so hot today. Another great thing about this place is that they have outlets. They have multiple outlets. So if you need to charge up, this would be a place to do it. And of course, this is a beautiful place to offer shade and the views are, well, just beautiful. What is missing here is a porta potty. I wish there was a porta potty here. Asking too much? Maybe. Leaving Middleport, I continued along the Stone Dust Trail, and this time I passed a couple of people kayaking. 
village of Medina with its lift bridge was my next stop. Medina, USA. As I continued along, I spotted a large apple structure called the Big Apple. Passing through the village, I came upon a very rough section of the trail and dismounted the bike. I was rewarded with a beautiful view of Medina Falls, just off to the side. I passed underneath the bridge and admired the mural painted on the wall. It had been an easy-going ride, so I was not expecting what came next. And here I thought this was going to be an easy-going ride, huh? I think it's time to take the bags off the bike and carry the bike over the tree. Let's do it. It's all over on the other side of the tree. <laughs> and now I just need to put it all back together. I think reinforcements are coming. Too late for me, but that tree is going to be cleared. I am ready to go and look at that. They have also almost finished removing the tree from the trail as if nothing happened. Incredible. Okay, let's keep going. My tree climbing adventure finalized, I continued the easygoing ride along the canal and saw yet another boat traveling west. Arriving in Albion, I encountered my first detour of the trail. Not really a detour, but rather construction along the trail, which called for getting off the bike and walking along the construction zone. I finished my day at the Red Rock Ponds RV Park in Holly, a great place for an overnight stay located right off the trail. I'm just getting ready to go to sleep and I wanted to show you something that is very unique to touring with the Brompton. Take a look at this. I couldn't do this with a sutra. I am uh, really, really tired as I didn't sleep well last night. So I will say good night and see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another day on the Erie Canal Trail. It's just about 7 a.m. and it's time to pack this up, eat some breakfast, and head out on the road. Let's go. Day three, what's the plan for today? Right now, I am just outside of Holly or Holberton and I am heading over to Pittsford and that's just beyond Rochester there. Another 50 plus kilometer day, another easy going day. Just wanted to show you on the map where we're at. The day started off right next to the canal. The riding surface was stone dust or compacted limestone with paved sections leading to bridges and crosswalks. As in previous days, I passed multiple bridges and stopped by parks and small gardens along the way. On approach to Brockport, I was faced with the second detour of the trip, another construction area. As previously, this was well signed with clear trail markers indicating the new path. I don't know if you noticed, but there were a lot more cyclists on this section of the trail. I even bumped into a small peloton of riders cycling in the opposite direction. People boating and kayaking also kept me company, and I lost count of the number of hellos I exchanged that day. Good morning! Take a Absolutely, you're the stars! <laughs> the mature trees that lined the trail provided me with the necessary shade. I was lucky to be riding in the September heat wave. I'm in Spencerport. I stopped at the Union Street Coffee House. It is Monday of a long weekend, Labor Day weekend. This place is open and they have some delicious, delicious coffee. I've been craving a really nice coffee for some time now and I have it. Did I mention it's hot yet? It is incredibly hot today. This is what's on the menu. Lots of water, lots of iced coffee and a very happy Agnieszka. Leaving Spencerport, I paused at the Union Street Bridge, one of the many lift bridges on the canal. The bridge had been raised to let a boat pass through and was just lowering as I approached. I am slightly confused in that the canal continues that way and the trail continues that way, but the sign indicates that I should be turning that way but why it's a good thing i pay attention to signs and also have downloaded a map of the erie canal because yes indeed i am meant to go 
that way and that's because I'm going to be switching sides so I switch sides from that side to this side and this is what the canal shores now look like I'm also climbing it's gradual and it's a a very gentle climb but it's a climb and I feel it I feel it on the Brompton okay water hydrate let's keep going there was a difference in the trail as I approached Rochester city limits trail surface was now paved asphalt and I could tell that I was riding through a city a lot more traffic noises and intricate highway underpasses but the trail continued to be separated from the street traffic and I really appreciated that I also had a beautiful surprise waiting for me when I reached the Genesee Valley Park. Water from intersecting waterways, the Red Creek, the Genesee River, and the Erie Canal was all around me, and a network of bridges guaranteed stunning views of it all. I was looking forward to stopping at REI, an outdoors equipment store, as the temperatures were super high and I really needed to cool off. While there, I picked up a chain link from the service department and got some snacks for the road. Back on the trail, I initially wanted to camp at Lock 32, but the amenities, water, washroom facilities, and electricity were much better at Lock 33. So after a bit of a back and forth, I ended up camping at Lock 33 that night. I'm camping at a lock station and take a look at the stunning sunset. There is another cyclist on the other side of the canal. He's got his tent set up with lights. Beautiful. And this is the lock. And I camped myself right underneath <laughs> or right next to a lamp. Who's getting sleep tonight? It's a good thing that I have a mask for my eyes, otherwise, I would not be sleeping. Alright, so we've got ourselves a trail that is closed and here's where we need to go 